The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Now, Daryl Martin. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I hope you had a great holiday weekend, enjoyed some time off, and got uh, rested and relaxed and ready to go for this coming week. We got some uh, earnings season now in full gear. It picked up last week, and it's uh, going to accelerate today after the close, and uh, the closing bell at 3 o'clock. So, of course, still plenty of opportunities on futures and on Nadex. Uh, once that comes on out, but it looks like right now, just to give you a current market wrap, we got the S&P up 3.75 points. We got the Nasdaq down four. We have the Dow up 48. We have the Russell up 3.4. Gold is currently up seven points right now, and copper is up a little over half percent, and uh, silver up almost one percent on the day. We got corn basically flat, and soybeans is up a whopping 28 plus points right now. Looks like it's up two percent. And looking over at oil, it's up 83 cents. And we have natural gas up 0.024, which is a little over half a percent right now. So actually a quiet day for natural gas. Uh, Euro dollar is down just nine pips at the moment. Currency is definitely interesting today. We'll go over and review that in the deviation levels here in a little bit. We got pound dollar up 20 pips. We got Aussie dollar at 45. We got US yen down at 99 pips. So uh, big move on the U.S. yen there as they basically say, hey, we're going we're gonna to inflate away. Now, of course, they've been doing that all along, but they want to target a GDP of 2%, so therefore they need to stimulate their economy more. Now, there is a reality check. You want to make sure you have this on it, okay? Because right now we actually see yen strength, even though they said that. So why? It doesn't kick in until January 2014 when, they go, when they're going to go just all out. So either one, they're just saying it to see what happens, or... Two, you know, they're like, okay, well, if they're not going to do it until 2014, then the yen has some strength for a while. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but that is going to, I actually put that on my calendar uh, to remind me that the yen is going to go into full, you know, spending spree even more than normal uh, on a whole new program starting January 2014. U.S. Canadian is up a mere eight pips. U.S. Franc down 28 pips on the day right now. And uh, with the, the uh, Nikkei actually had a pretty massive drop last night. And uh, the dollar index right now, uh, the basket future against uh, you know multiple currencies against the dollar, is right now it, it is in negative territory at the moment. And uh, bonds edging a little bit higher right now. And so uh, we'll just uh, check everything out, see how it's going. And like I said, we want to make sure you have the market updates. So let's go ahead and do a quick review since we've been out. Make sure uh, you are caught up on basically just the market moving events that have taken place that are so easy to forget about. Um, let's see here. That way you, you know, like, okay, what's going on and why is it going on and everything else. And the big reports really, uh, we didn't have much, obviously, uh, over the weekend, Friday there. But on Monday, uh, we, did have, we have the year group meetings, um, and they are happening. Uh, they started uh, Monday, and basically they, they're held in Brussels, and they have, you know, the president and the finance minister and the Euro area member states. And right now... Uh, Draghi's making a little speech uh, to everybody, so uh, we'll see exactly who they're going to, you know, what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. There's talks of some resignations happening and some replacements happening and all that. So um, all that stuff comes out, and uh, basically it's it's an economic policy plan for the 17 euro area members. That started yesterday, and then we also, let's see, we had a couple other reports come out that are worth, uh, that's not so much a report, it's just, uh, you know, news coming out of that. And then, of course, as you know, the bank, uh, U.S. banks were closed yesterday. We got the monetary policy statement that came out of the yen, and uh, their overnight call rate left unchanged. But their statement, like I said, talking about the whole 2014 um, release, and we can go in and pull up a chart real quick. Let me grab a chart for you. And we'll go in and we'll look at some short-term charts over here. And there we go. All right. So got that up for everybody uh, watching there. And um, when that statement came out, it came out last night at 
randomly, 1047, okay? And uh, so, you know, you go on there, and let's see here, that's going to put us at 22, like right around, I mean, you need to see where everything started happening, 947 Central. So basically, it routed into it, and then you got a lot of strength based on that policy statement that came out, and a definite huge market-moving event. And we'll go in, we'll be talking, like I said, here in a little bit after we go through the news reports, we're going to look at the deviations on where everything's at right now. And let's see here, let me go ahead and remove these drawings for us, so that way uh, we'll add the new ones as we go into the deviations for the day. All right, there we go. And uh, so that was basically the big news from last night. Um, and then this morning, uh, of course, they had their press conference, and that's where even more information came out. That kept driving things. That came out at uh, 1 o'clock or midnight, basically, and you know, just more yen strength off of that. And then, so, I mean, you knew yen was the thing to trade if you were trading last night just because, and I mean, it had multiple massive reports. And uh, we'll have, you know, we have more reports, of course, coming out this week. Plenty of opportunities. Um, also, the German Zoo Economic Sentiment Report came out. It came out much better than expected, much better than we've seen in a long time. And so they surveyed German institutions. And like I said, it's actually one of the best reports that we've seen in a long time. It's actually a positive 31.5. And I'm trying to see the last time, let's see here, that we were abo even above that level. It's like in 2010. So uh, it's been a long time since it's been that bullish. So I'm not quite sure how good that is. But that was uh, May of 2010. And uh, so we can go in and, you know, one of the interesting things to do is go in and, like, pull up an index, throw it out on, you know, weekly charts. And then go back and go, okay, well, that came out on May of 2010 was the last time it was that high. So just what happened when it was that high last time, May 18, 2010, and then back up right here. And then what you can do is you can see, wow, market did not do too well right there. So it actually didn't pick back up until July. So actually it was nearing some highs for a short period of time there and then pulling back. So there was a major pullback right around the time that that report came out last year. But it did come out in like about the third week. So it came out here and then uh, dropped on down a little bit further, even with that massive, uh, you know, higher number compared to what we have now. And then it's been dropping ever since. So the interesting thing is it, as it drops, <laughs> the market's risen. So with all the different easing and European programs and everything else that's been going on. Um, and then there's a few other reports that came out. Um, the Spanish uh, HPI came out at negative 2.2, uh, which is... A little better. Um, that's good. It's the appraisal price of homes since so they've been negative 2.4 like it was last time. Um, core retail sales came out of Canada this morning. And so we can pull up and we check that out. And let's zoom on back in there. And we'll see exactly how that affected the market this morning. And it's good for you to make note of these reports if you're going to be uh, using these at all. Just to know, like, hey, how does this affect it? And start logging it and learning. And you get this very, very cool journal where you can see the overall impact on the market of a variety of different reports, a variety of different situations. And so next time core retail sales comes out on Canada, you have your journal to go back to and all that stats. And I mean, you do this for a few months and it becomes very easy because you've done the research on each report. So anyways, that report came out at 8.30. And um, let's see right here. So that'd be 7.30 Central. And as you can see, uh, Canadian dollar got stronger um, on that, so U.S. Canadian, uh, let's see, 7.30, yeah, wow, that's that's pretty crazy. That's almost, you know, why would it do that? Um, it did come back up, it gave a bounce back, and gave another, basically gave you two chances to trade. We talked about how to use that twice, but uh, that report actually came in negative. Uh, the other issue is the retail sales came in positive. So the core retail sales is negative, retail sales positive. They sort of in, almost sort of cancel each other out. So, um, and so the core retail sales being negative, you get the pop up. Weaker Canadian and then retail sales also being better than expected pop down. So basically two different reports, very similar, but uh, core basically is the uh, value sales at the retail level and doesn't um, factor in automobiles. And so it went in and went back down, came back up, went back down. Overall, it's like retail sales won the battle over the core retail sales, basically including automobiles. And so Canada was actually able to gain some strength. And of course, uh, the dollar also being weaker with the market running up so far. I'm sure added to that entire cycle. But uh, whenever you get mixed reports like that, a lot of times it's best to, you know, if you're in the trade, to, you know, especially if you have any profits, get out of it. Because when you get conflicting reports on the exact same currency at the same time, it's not going to give you just a lot of idea on where the market's going to go. And you're usually not going to get a great, long, big move. Um, so it's like, you know, find a better place to put your money. Um, 
existing home sales came out right here in the United States this morning. And they came in worse uh, than expected. They thought that we were going to have a little over 5.09 million um, existing home sales. It dropped to 4.94 million. And that number is obviously worse than the expectation. It's uh, worse than it was last time. They reversed, They actually revised the last number down. And looking over at this time last year, we would have had, let's see here, a little bit further back. There we go. Um, it's worse than last year. Actually, it's a little better than last year. So it's a little better than last year, but worse than expected and worse than last month. And uh, But overall, did not obviously have a, a major damper on the economy that came out at 9 o'clock. And despite it coming out, I mean, that was basically the driving force behind this dip right here. And uh, the news basically wore off in about, you know, 30 minutes or so and decided to go ahead and rebound on back up. And But uh, that was a report that you need to be aware of. That's what made that pullback. And then right here, uh, we got Draghi. Like I said, he's talking right now. So we'll see uh, what all comes out of his mouth and how that totally impacts the markets. Right now, the markets are looking up on whatever it is that he's saying. And uh, the euro dollar, euro is just crazy today. Um, but right now, it's spiking up a little bit based on whatever he's talking about. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Make of England Governor King is going to be coming out. Uh, he's going to be talking uh, as well. He's going to speak at the Confederation of the British Industry in Ireland. Um, and so that's going to be coming out at 2.45 p.m. So I'm sure there will be some people tweeting some stuff out from that. And uh, so make sure, again, that's 2.45 today Eastern Time. Um, he's going to be making his uh, speech. And then tonight, uh, for some trades to be ready for, so from FX trades, some of my favorite trades to hop out and be ready for, we've got Aussie Dollar coming out with their CPI number. Be aware they do have uh, the trim mean CPI also coming out. So ideally, both those numbers line up and they're the same. Um, often they are, you know, but uh, you really want to look to see, you know, that the, if they are the same, that just gives you more confidence to go in that direction after the report. and Or you can go before if you want to, but I like to go in after. Or you can also, the other option is you can do a straddle on the Nadex spreads. You can do a strangle on the Nadex binaries. So, but again, that CPI number coming out at 7.30 tonight over on the Aussie dollar. And uh, so sort of in your evening trade. And rolling on over to tomorrow morning, we got the uh, climate count change coming in. Um, let's see, climate count change. The number of people are claiming unemployment, basically their unemployment claims um, in Britain. That'll be coming out at 4.30. Obviously, that's a heavy impact report. They also are going to have their meeting minutes um, from their you know, from the bank, from the last uh, official bank rate that was announced. So that'll be coming out. So both of those heavy impacts. They also are going to be releasing their unemployment rate um, and their average earnings index. So claimant count and NPC are the heavy impacts. Unemployment is the medium impact. And then um, average earnings. So basically those, that's the, literally the ranking of the impact of those trades. But we've got the pound dollar trade for tomorrow morning at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. TFNN is proud to partner with Great Panther Silver for another exciting silver coin giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Super Silver Giveaway begins the week of January 28th and we'll be choosing 47 lucky winners. It's free to enter with absolutely no strings attached. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com today to fill out your entry form. Every hour that we're on the air, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. the week of January 28th, we'll be randomly choosing one lucky winner that will win a silver coin or buy from Great Panther Silver and TFNN. And the final hour of the week, Friday, February 1st, we'll choose three lucky winners. That's 47 winners in just one week with over $1,000 in silver given away to our loyal listeners. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. And for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex symbol GPL or on the Toronto Stock Exchange symbol GPR. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading App. We're uh, going through and doing wrap ups on the news, talking about what to expect, what's coming up. And uh, let's see here for tomorrow. So we got the 4.30 reports coming out Eastern Time there on the pound dollar. And uh, we'll have a zoo economic expectation report come out of uh, Switzerland for the franc at 5 a.m. That is a medium impact, however, so be aware of that. We do have some uh, big reports coming out on Canada uh, tomorrow morning. We have their monetary policy statement, their Bank of Canada rate statement, their overnight rate, all coming out at once. And uh, so just be aware of that. And then they'll have their press conference an hour and 15 minutes away. So all that comes out at 10 a.m., and the press conference comes out at 11.15 a.m. So that should definitely be a uh, mover for the U.S. Canadian. And uh, you can go in there. You can straddle it, uh, strangle it, whatever. Uh, you sort of know what the report's going to be. I mean, they're not going to be changing. Um, I, you know, they're, uh, I don't see them changing their interest rate at all. Nobody does. But, uh, you know, so which ideally should add strength to the Canadian dollar by not lowering their interest rates so that make the U.S. CAD go down. Um, so one way to play it would be to hop in before it. Um, you could also straddle or strangle it, like I talked about. Um, you know, straddle it using uh, spread, strangle it using binaries. Um, if you think it's going to be a non-event, you could go in and you could uh, basically do a premium collection strategy. So there's a lot of different ways that you can trade on Nadex and just uh, different ways to put them together. You know, you can do butterflies by uh, basically going in and basically selling it in the money binary and um, buying it in the money binary. 
So by doing that together, it's sort of like a, it's like a reverse straddle, but with a cap, so it has a risk reward graph of a butterfly. And uh, then what else do we got? We got uh, China is going to have a report coming out. They got their HSBC flash manufacturing PMI coming out at 845. And of course, these are just a major fundamental. Um, government reports coming out this week. We got a 330 German flash manufacturing PMI. That's a high impact report. Comes out at 330 on Thursday. Okay, and then of course unemployment claims here in the U.S. will be released as well. And let's see, we got crude oil inventories coming out on Thursday this week due to the holiday instead of being Wednesday. That's Thursday. So you're gonna have natural gas at 10:30, crude oil at 11. Again, uh, both of those happening on Thursday. And then let's see here on Friday. We'll have the uh, German IFO business climate report at 4 a.m. So that gives you a good euro dollar trade right there, 4 a.m. And of course, the annual meeting has been going on for several days. Uh, we talked about the meetings earlier in the week, or earlier in the show there. And um, so they come out, and the, the WF annual meetings are held in uh, Davis, are attended by like central bankers, prime ministers, finance ministers, trade ministers, um, leaders from over 90 different countries come in, and they talk with reporters throughout the day. So uh, this is going to be going on, like I said, for several days. It's the World Economic Forum. And um, so you definitely uh, just want to be aware of that, that there could be a variety of different statements coming out from uh, this from a variety of different, you know, cent- head of central banks and all that. So it's a, it's a big thing. You definitely want to be aware of it. It will be happening, like I said, for several days this week. And it starts on Wednesday. And uh, so all sorts of central bank, who knows what, coming out. Um, at 4.30, we're going to have the preliminary GDP. Um, that's going to be, uh, come, that'll hit the uh, pound dollar at 4.30 a.m. on Friday. And then uh, Canadians can have a core CPI number come out. So a lot of Canadian uh, reports this week. And then new home sales wrapping up the week here uh, 10 a.m. on Friday. As far as earnings go, uh, we have obviously a lot of earnings happening this week. And a great source that I like to go to for earnings. Let me uh, hop up there for you real quick. Let's go over here and I go to um, I like earnings.com. Sort of makes sense, right? They go in and they have all sorts of information on there. Um, it's very helpful. They, they have their conference calls, they have the expectations, they have the upcoming earnings, and you can use this to find a lot of different information that you're looking for. And um, you can click on the company and you can find past information on earnings and like you can find the recorded conference calls if you wanna to listen to them. So if you're into stocks, if you're following a certain stock, you wanna see what it says, then uh, you can use that. Um, another website that's uh, really good is the Whisper Number. Uh, Whisper Number basically is the, you know, so they, they take the consensus of what people say together and put it in there on what the expectation is um, on the whispers. And so uh, there's, you know, it's a very, very helpful thing for earnings. So again, earnings season is up. So these are really, really good resources uh, that you can take advantage of. They're free. There's public websites. You can take advantage of them. And, uh, but uh, again, very, very good and uh, easy to use. But you can see, you know, like right there, the whisper on Apple, you know, and uh, right now the most popular whispers and click here to get the top um, earnings trades of 2013 right now. And I mean, they have all this other stuff in here you can check out. But uh, anyways, it's very, very cool. You can also see the whisper number impact and they do go through and they do reviews. And uh, so between the Wall Street expectations and the whisper number expectations, putting those two together could be, uh, you know, just very, very helpful in your trading, looking at fundamentals on stocks. Now, even if you're trading futures, it's very good to know that, you know, something like, hey, Apple's coming out, or Google's coming out after the bell today. Apple's coming out after the bell tomorrow. So knowing that, of course, you got NASDAQ trades and stuff that you could be doing, like, say, between 4 and 4.15. Stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insights subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. We went ahead and uh, wrapped up. The market got you caught up on everything. Let you know what fundamental reports have come out and are coming out. And uh, now go ahead and just, let's check out the market and the movement, what's been going on. And uh, in some ways, not a lot, but, you know, it's uh, it's been interesting to say the least. It's, uh, I'm really ready for the close today. And uh, so we can really get into this, what, you know, at this point, what I consider full high gear earnings season. So let's go ahead and check it out and see how the markets are shaking up. All right, we'll have to have it in the deviation Yesterday, about eight points on the S&P. I bumped on up to about uh, 12 points right now. And it looks like uh, we have a move. 1484.7 is our half deviation mark. Okay, so 1484.7 is like right there. And uh, let's see if we got price levels built in. Let me add the price levels on the chart. It makes it really easy just to put them on there for you. But again, that's a 1487 point uh or actually 1484.7 for a half deviation so i mean we're talking about within a tick of that and so obviously very very good nailed it right on the money there and then uh looking a little bit uh further down on the downside 1473.1 and so if we back up over here 1473.1 really the market does not touch an either deviation i mean coming like right up to it and then pulling back so 
you know, putting all that together right now, I mean, obviously everything very range bound, everybody waiting to see um, how these earnings are going to come out. And uh, times like this, when you're waiting to see stuff, that's a good time to go in and do like premium collection. Um, let's see what else we got over here. We got the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, I did have a little bit bigger of a move today. On the downside over here, we can go on down on NASDAQ. And at a 27.23 was a half deviation. And it literally just touched it. It uh, turned around, bounced on back up. And again, this is not standard deviation. And uh, this is not, you know, this is just, it's just implied deviation. And so basically what I do is I go and I take uh, 16 different options, implied volatility, and weight that IV for each one. And then I go in based on, you know, volume, open interest, everything else. There's a lot of other factors that go into it. And then at the end, come up with a volatility index and then factor that into a simple intraday uh, deviation formula. So that way it's what the market expects, which is implied volatility, the expected move, what the market expects on how far the market's going to move on any given day. And um, very, very helpful and, you know, very, very accurate. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use them. Let's see, on the upside, 2745 right here. Uh, would have been, let's see, 27.45 would have been the move up would be looking for on the market uh, based on just the, you know, the last close there. So really it's just stayed right in that range of that half deviation move. And uh, starting to show some weakness, uh, indices might give some back here. We'll see, uh, really the end of the day is going to be the, I mean, it's going to, I would think be a big mover um, after everything starts coming out. Looking over on the Dow. So on the Dow right here. Uh, it went ahead and moved down a little bit there. Uh, we had 13,542 was our half deviation mark on the Dow. So just right there and stopped and came on back up. Uh, half deviation move up on the Dow would actually require move up to 13,610. And so we got that right here. And uh, with that uh, deviation move a little bit lower. So it basically came right back up, half deviation pull back. And um, so now we're just sort of watching it and seeing where everything is sitting at. Looking on over at all the markets, we pull all this together, and it'll give us uh, a really good idea of where everything is sitting. But um, we'll go ahead and check out the Russell. So on the Russell, looking at this, we got on the low side of the uh, small caps there, um, 885.6. And so I scroll down a little bit here, 885.6. And there we go. So it didn't hit the half deviation, moved down. And then uh, I'm looking for a move up to possibly 896.4, almost there. So uh, really just, again, all the indices range bound right now, waiting for all these earnings to come out. And, uh, you know, the House, obviously, is that they're voting tomorrow on their plan. Um, news came out on Friday that they are going to do, or last week they are going to do this. But then news came out, hey, this is a violation of the Constitution per the, I don't know, 14th or 28th or whichever amendment it is. Uh, that Congress, uh, basically they can't change Congress's pay. Well, um, they can only change it like whenever, the, after the new election cycle for Congress. And But then the Republicans came out and they said, nope, this is not in violation of that. We are not saying that we're changing pay. We're just saying we're withholding pay until after a budget is passed. Therefore, everybody will still get paid, obviously, as soon as they pass a budget. <laughs> so... Um, and of course, they're doing it based on the chamber. So the how the chamber that hasn't passed. So if the house passes one, they get paid. If the Senate doesn't, they don't get paid. And of course, all that's to be required is they pass a budget. Well, the Senate hasn't passed one in three years. They probably not going to do it the fourth year. Uh, and so, don't really see that happening. So it'll be interesting to see how this whole thing comes out because they're just trying to put the focus on hey, the Senate won't do a budget. So it's all politics back and forth. And uh, we'll see if they hold their guns and say hey, no budget, no deal. All we ask for is a budget. And if you don't have a budget, we'll still extend it by a few months, but no pay. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see uh, how this plays out. But um, eventually, it'd just be nice to let the markets be the markets, wouldn't it? All right, so we got natural gas. Natural gas right here moved down to 3.519. And then I move on up, expected up to 3.613. So obviously, we had that right there, that full half move on the markets for that day. And uh, But it came right down, hit the level perfectly. So you can see how these levels, what they did is they let you target, like what is my realistic profit target? Okay, and that volume bar was sort of your clue that the market was done, by the way. And um, anytime you see those massive volume bars, especially on 10 minute charts, uh, that usually is a good signifying point of a turnaround or things going choppy, at least a pullback, but often a turnaround of things getting really choppy. So always be on the watch out on those 10 minute bars 
for the high volume. Um, and what I like to do on the deviations, one, it's a profit target, helps you pick binaries, helps you pick uh, spreads. But also what you can do is the bar that breaks it, uh, especially when it's a 10-minute bar, is the best way to for this. I like using different bar types or different analysis. But for tightening my stops, I like 10-minute bars, the bar that actually breaks through the deviation level. I put my stop one tick above that. And so that allows me to give it, you know, give it room to move. But um, if it pulls back, I don't give up too much, but it has the chance to still move on back down. So that's our uh, natural gas right there. We got uh, crude oil. So crude oil, moving on up there. Let's see here. Uh, move up right now. It's 96.99. We have a 96.62 was the expectation on the crude oil right there. And so that's where we expected to move up to. It did hit that. The next move after that was 96.85. So just shy of the high right there. And uh, let's see here. We can get rid of that one. And we'll get rid of this one. And then we'll go from the previous days. And then we'll go in now and look at crude oil 95.46. So right there was where we expected it to move down to. And it literally is a perfect move. Uh, low 95.47. So I mean, one tick off. Basically, within five ticks, I consider that hit. Uh, and so that's just one tick away. And it goes down, bounces off that. So you can have a profit target, tighten stop, whatever. Look for potential reversal hitting off that point you get a reversal pattern right here so hit boom higher high lower high entry and uh, you can start tightening your stops all the way up and uh, with profit goal you know okay I'm going for 9660 on this trade the bar that breaks it you tighten your stop on that trade the bar that breaks the next one you tighten your stop on that you stopped out right here you're out of the trade you're flat for the day on crude so uh, makes for a very very simple crude trade and then hopping on over looking at gold so on gold here, we'll uh, clean this one up too. And uh, gold, checking out how it's moving because it definitely has started to have a little bit of volatility today. Um, on the high side there, we were looking for gold to go up to 1693.2 to begin with as our first stop. We'll obviously hit that, hit that overnight multiple times. And I've sort of treated this area as a little bit of a resistance level. And then, uh, then we expected to move up to 1695.6 was our next uh, target. And you can see right there, literally like, touching it, touching it, finally breaks it, we tighten the stop, falls back down, now it's just oscillating between the 0.5 and 0.7 deviation level. And then if we go a little bit lower on it, we're looking down at a 1680.8, we obviously didn't fall that low. So that's not the, really the mark that we're shooting for. But uh, definitely gave us tightening stops if you were long, um, didn't you really give you much on the short side. And then looking over at a couple of the other markets here, we got silver. So on silver, let's go ahead and check out its movement today. And it has had some nice movements in there. And uh, let's see here. All right. You figure out what the quick key is for that one. And um, I know there has to be one. And so the high side there, 32.245 on silver. And we are looking for silver to make a move up to 32.17 and 32.27. So 32.27 would have been just a little bit higher, right here. I mean, just like right there. And then, uh, but the other mark would have been, like I said, before that, a little bit lower would have been 32.17. So right here, this being the bar that broke it. That's where you tighten your stop, and uh, you're still in the trade, or you're out because the, you know, uh, if you're trading Nadex or if you're trading. Um, Spreads or binaries on Nadex, it closes when the floor, when the pit closes. And uh, also the volume usually goes down pretty significantly at that point. So be looking to get out pretty soon. And looking on over, we got silver right there. We got copper. So copper, let's see here on this one, our moves uh, take us up to a high side of 3.7077 and 3. Let's see, 7077. That actually puts us up to a full deviation, 3.701, which have been right here. Would have actually taken us above it. So we get a bump above, we tighten it. It falls back below, closing below, and then bumps through it again. So we go ahead and we tighten it one more time. So especially on high volume bars, okay? Because we were expecting potential reversals off of high volume bars. So just like we had a high volume bar that broke through the deviation, like I said, we had like actual highs, like high open, low close, everything below the deviation mark. It breaks through it again. We tighten it one more time. And then um, you basically you're out at the end of the day right there. And uh, But also the high volume bars are another reason to tighten it twice. Either way, you got out like right near the top. So it uh, worked out pretty well um, using the deviations and, you know, putting it all together. 
hopping on over. We'll check out some ags. And uh, corn has been, I want to say, pretty flat today. Um, so not a whole lot of news there. Had a little gap up and um, on the corn contract. Looks like uh, the high side we had on corn was around 734, 735 almost. And uh, corn we were looking for a move up to 734.3 would have been the, uh, the 0.7 deviation. So if you're coming in, you're analyzing this overnight, it hit it, it came back, it would have, if you were, let's just say you were long, you obviously weren't long, because you'd be insane to trade corn at this time. But uh, you'd say, okay, well, if I was long, that's where my stop would be. Okay, now I'd be looking for a short. Now the market's opening up, okay? And so you see, okay, where am I looking for it to go back down to? And really on this, you're looking just to fill the gap. So it's pretty simple. Uh, you're going back for 727.5, where the market closed at the uh, previous day, or the settlement price right there, 727.5. And uh, that's a full half deviation, or actually, yeah, half deviation right back to the level uh, points, even a point seven. So at a half or a point seven, either one, you had two uh, very good points that you could have came in and take advantage of the movement based on again implied vault market expectation of movement. Use that, and when you're looking for a reversal, make it break the low, you know, and go. Okay, now what would I be doing if I was going short? If I was long, how would I look to go short? And then sometimes you know you're joining the game a little bit late because things have been happening overnight. But it lets you see where to enter and what your target would be, and is there a reason to be short based on that stop being broken? Um, let's see here. Now let's check out some soybeans, and uh, they've been taking off right here, as you can see, up to fourteen sixty point seventy five on the high side, and uh, fourteen sixty point seventy five, fourteen fifty three point six was the implied volatility built into the market. Again, that's a uh, 1453.6, so right around here. You know, you got to round that off, of course, into quarters, but um, 1453.6. So right here we go in, 1453.75. So if you round it off, you actually got to bump it up, like I said, a little bit higher, 1453.75. And um, so it hadn't broke it, hadn't broke it. Finally breaks it. You tighten the stop. Okay, so what's the next level we're going for after that right there? Uh, if we want to go a little bit higher... On soybeans, the goal would be to make a move up to 1465.8. Pretty big move. So don't know if we're going to quite hit that one. Uh, that'd be a one and a half deviation. That'd basically hold another half deviation up before the market closes. But you definitely tightened your stops at this point, and uh, just sort of waiting to see if the market decides to do like one little last rally before the day's over there in soybeans. Now checking out a couple other things, we can see here uh, we got the let's see Aussie dollar. On the Aussie dollar, um, moves on up and down. So we got a high side of 1.0577. And Aussie dollar 1.0577 would have taken you actually perfectly up 1.0568. So again, right here. And if you want to get access to these, you don't know where they're at, you can hop on over on TFNN and the diagnostic. Uh, you'll see the logo there on the homepage. And you can uh, get access to them right away. But uh, again, check this out. I mean, that's how helpful this is. So you go in here and you're up to 1.0568. So market expectations on movement, that's all the way, that's a full deviation up, okay? And again, you had a couple other stops along the way, 1.0553. So 55 five, and then 3 would be right about here. So right down at this, wow, we're going to bring it all the way down. And um, so there's your stop, the bar that broke it. See what I'm talking about? The bar that broke it, all right? And uh, remember it closes below, next bar that breaks it, tighten your stop again, right there. And uh, so it helps you capture majority of the Aussie dollar move with an expectation of giving yourself some room to let it breathe. So very, very helpful strategy, very simple strategy, very black and white. And uh, hop on over to TFN.com and check it out. We'll be right back after this break.